All right, well, this is like my <laughs> third time trying to record this. I was having some issues with the mic, so hopefully the audio quality is good on this one and it's not cutting out like it was before. But anyway, I wanted to go over my ore stacker build that I set up for uh, 320. Um, I Last time I played Ore Stacker was Sentinel League, and I was actually really hyped to play Ore Stacker again once I saw some of the Sanctified Relic mods. And I initially built my Ore Stacker around the Reservation Efficiency Sanctified Relic mod, but I ended up opting into going for the Max Res. Now the Max Res eliminates the problems that Melding of the Flesh uh, has kind of introduced now with reducing your Max Res with Melding of the Flesh. So that is kind of the reason that I'm going with uh, the way that I have designed my Aura Stacker for this league. Now, I'm not going to say that this is the best Aura Stacker that's going to exist this league. I'm also not saying that this is the only way to set it up. I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to be much bigger brain than me and set up much better builds. Uh, but I wanted to get this out there uh, since it really doesn't look like there's a whole lot of other Aura Stackers up currently. Um, as, you know, maybe there's people that are unsure about the build. Uh, unsure if it's really that viable this league and maybe they don't really know ways to build around it so uh, to start out we'll just go by going in the gear we'll talk about the gear we'll talk about some playability things of the build how it does and then we'll kind of go over maybe some of the downsides uh, that I have with my build and finish off with kind of what the future holds for this build for me uh, so we'll start by going into the gear uh, pretty standard setup here with the double nebulous opting into spell crit chance on mine just because i didn't know what my budget was going to get me uh in the end so i wanted to go kind of cheap on the nebuluses early plus crit chance or spell crit chance helps a lot here since i'm actually already getting a ton of multi so i don't really need a whole lot of multi on the scepters the crit chance is really helpful and yeah obviously an upgrade here would be spells have a chance to deal double damage uh or crit multi but those are a little bit more expensive options. We are running Double Call the Brotherhood. Uh, one with Wrath, the other one with some good implicits uh, for survivability, giving us discipline or effect and intelligence. Uh, you could swap this second one out with a Nimus. We'll talk about that in the playability of how that really affects it. Um, but I would say swapping for Nimus for more bossing type content or things you want to really just get as much damage out of this build as possible, I would say swap the Nimus in for that. We're running a uh, Evasion Energy Shield Hybrid Helmet so that we can roll Spell Suppression. So we're running Reservation Efficiency, Spell Suppression, plus the AoE Gems, and as much Energy Shield as we can with Reservation Efficiency on the Implicit, as well as Spell Crit Chance. For the chest, we are running Reservation Efficiency, Spell suppression and then as much energy shield as we can with non curse aura effect and purity of fire aura effect on the implicits. Now we're running the purity of fire aura effect because we're running purity of fire, obviously, and we're running a sanctified relic with plus three max fire res. All in all, all these together with the rest of our aura effect, we are able to get up to 90 all res. And with the mage bane as well as the spell suppression on the two pieces of gear and the boots, we're able to get ourselves to spell suppress capped. Talking about the boots, really cheap boots here. I just wanted to get tailwind and spell suppression and then as much else as I could on the boots. Um, but so I ended up getting a pair like this. Uh, plenty of upgrades that could be made here, variety of ways that I can upgrade them. Uh, but I will eventually be trying to get elevated tailwind and pierce. Uh, just because Pierce is really feels good on Spark, and uh, the elevated uh, Tailwind will also feel really good. Now, we are running Ashes of the Stars, uh, pretty much mandatory for the Reservation Efficiency of Skills, but you don't actually have to get a perfect Ashes of the Stars. Uh, you really can run a 27 plus quality Ashes. This is going to allow you to hit that 50 quality breakpoint on any individual gem by having that gem be a corrupted gem with 23 quality so i'm doing this for divergent spark and i'm also doing this for divergent haste this does mean that you lose three percent uh quality on every other gem but in my opinion this was a much more elegant solution than trying to buy 20 30 ashes as a 20 30 ashes ends up being pretty expensive so for the gloves 
we are running pretty standard spark gloves, cast speed, proj, speed, multi, crit chance, and then as much ES as we can get. I think these are a great option to buy instead of craft, as you can probably get a pretty good pair of gloves for a lot cheaper than you really should be getting them. Um, but there are plenty of guides on how to craft these uh, out there if you are looking to craft these. And the last piece of gear, we are running Mage Blood, and we are running uh, four Magic Flasks, uh, Movement Speed, Crit Chance, Spell Suppression, Mana Cost, Evasion Armor, and Crit Chance, Cast Speed. And for our last flask, to top it, off, to top it all off, we're running a Bottle Faith. Now, in terms of the skill tree, uh, this is a uh, skill tree that I made to get as much crit chance as we or crit multi as we can from the middle here, running a lethal pride with double transcendent flesh. Now, I have to have one of these as uh, reduce or increase reservation efficiency of skills, and then I have a CB uh, lethal pride. Uh, and then, in terms of the rest, we are running three three stat voices, melding of the flesh. Uh, Forbidden Flesh and Flame for Necromancer, an intuitive leap down here, and a Watcher's Eye. And for our Ascendancy, we are picking Raider and Champion, and then obviously Forbidden Flesh and Flaming Necro. In terms of the Small Cluster Jewels, we're running 6 Small Cluster Jewels with 35% increased effect in Introspection, and we're running 2 with 35% increase effect and as much ES as we can. And then for the rest of the stats, you're really just looking for as many attributes as you can and resistances. Now, all in all, this is pretty simple. When we look at the stat sheet, we have 66,000 armor. We have about 10K evasion. We have 4,440 energy shield. We are spell press capped and we are 90 all res. Now, for our auras, this means we're running Purity of Elements, we're running Blood and Sand for Proj Speed, we're running Determination, Vitality, Haste, Discipline, Herald of Ice, Purity of Fire, Defiance Banner, Herald of Thunder, Zealotry, and Wrath. Uh, now, speaking of the Heralds, I forgot to mention, we are running two Medium Cluster Jewels with Purposeful Harbinger. Uh, Purposeful Harbinger, when you're running two Heralds, gives you 16% per point if you're only running two. Uh, this can only go up to 40, so if you run a third one, it's only going to give you 8% additional uh, aura effect, so it's not really worth getting a third Purposeful Harbinger. And yeah, so that fills out our, our stat sheet. All in all, the build feels really good. Uh, 4,400 energy shield is pretty low, but there's plenty of upgrades that I can get this up to about 5k, uh, and even in its current state, build feels really tanky for pretty much all content uh the only things that you really struggle with are something any build would struggle with uber boss slams a lot of just neglecting uber boss mechanics uh and even neglecting some non uber boss mechanics um but in terms of a lot of those molten shell ends up solving the problem so uh if you time your molten shell uh, you can have a pretty easy time fixing some of the problems of those mechanics. So in terms of the damage, I'm doing somewhere around 70 or 1.5 million per hit with Spark, meaning that I have like around an average DPS of 17 million if I don't get any kind of re-hits with Spark. But if we do get re-hits with Spark, uh, we can kind of we'll be pushing DPS somewhere between that 17 million and 55 million, I think it was. Uh, I will link the POB in the description so you can kind of take a look at that. But basically the way that you kind of determine that is that you have your average uh, or your DPS number at the top on Spark, which is should be around the 17 million number. And then you'll have the full DPS down at the bottom, which is like the perfect condition. Your Sparks are perfectly hitting when, that, uh, when their damage cooldown is done. Um, so kind of like that tight arena of perfect like ping pong situation. Now, speaking of that, this is where Nimbus kind of comes into play. Now, in order to put on Nimbus, we lose some damage with Call of the Brotherhood, but we actually do end up gaining damage with Nimbus in kind of that perfect bossing situation. So what ends up happening is Nimbus causes your projectiles to return to you, which effectively means that they have double duration because Spark goes for its duration, 
and it attempts to return to you, but because it travels in random directions, it doesn't return to you. It just kind of keeps traveling randomly, and we can get our spark's duration to be doubled with that. So the way that spark actually does damage is you can't shotgun with it. You can't hit multiple enemies with a single cast of spark. Each individual cast of spark, so that's two casts because of spell echo, but each cast of spark only one projectile can hit the enemy in any given cast but then that cast for that specific enemy goes on cooldown for 0.66 seconds so this means that if you were to hit the enemy with five sparks at a time from one cast only one would register as a hit the others would just pass through it like they pierced it but it wouldn't count as piercing it it would just they would just pass through uh, and then that any projectile from that cast cannot hit that enemy for 0.66 seconds and do damage. But once that duration is over, then it's fair game for any of the projectiles to hit it. But you end up on the same boat where only one can hit it and then it goes on cooldown again. So the way that you would calculate your damage for this perfect arena setup is you would take your average DPS for Spark and you would multiply it by kind of this number of times that it can hit in any given cast, which you get from taking your spark duration and dividing it by this 0.66 constant. So for my build, this means that my sparks can theoretically hit three times. Each cast can hit three times uh, for its duration, and so I would be able to multiply my average DPS by this three times multiplier. But because we're now doubling our duration with Nimbus, we're able to now multiply that by six. So you do end up gaining damage in kind of this perfect boss situation because of the way the Sparks damage works. Um, but in my opinion, I don't really like the Nova effect for Spark for clearing because you end up shooting half of them behind you. So I typically would run Call of the Brotherhood for clearing stuff and then for bossing type content, I would run Nimbus. So that is kind of the build in a nutshell. Now, like I said before, this isn't going to be the only way people are going to set up Aura Stacker. I think you're probably going to see a number of people set this up with different ideas for the Sanctified Relic. Uh, one, there again, there's the Reservation Efficiency one. Uh, people might set it up based around that. Uh, and you might also get some people that have other wacky ideas for setting up this build. Uh, I'm not the smartest person by any means when it comes to build design. Uh, this is actually kind of really just a ripped build off one of my old aura stackers with a couple modifications to make it work with the current reservation efficiency and things. So all in all, uh, I really enjoy the build. It feels reasonably tanky. It does really good damage. Um, and I'm having a whole lot of fun with it. And I have plenty of upgrades that I can make for the build in the future between the boots, the scepters, the cluster jewels. Uh, to push the survivability and the damage a little bit further. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully this helped you. If you are looking to set up an aura stacker, uh, I wouldn't recommend this if you don't have a reasonable budget. It pretty much is Mage Blood mandatory and a lot of the gear can get pretty expensive. So uh, it's definitely kind of a pricey build. But all in all, if you like the video, please like uh, if you appreciate if you like the content then you can subscribe uh and let me know in the comments what you think about this build what changes you might make uh and all of that and i hope to see you guys in the next one